All right, so let us get on with the uh, revision of uh, science past paper. Um, that is, uh, we're using the GCE past paper 20, past science past paper GCE 2020. That is what we're using. And um, okay, so we are going to revise this past paper and let's get to it uh, answer all questions on the answer grid those are the instructions uh, question one says how many significant figures are there in the number 0 0.050200 0 0 0 0? and that's the question how many significant figures are there in the number so when it comes to significant figures you have to follow the rules so yes what are the rules of uh when we're talking about significant figures okay, so i'm going to use uh this book here and um, it's okay this is zero so this should be significant and the non-zero digit should also be significant and then um or at the end of the decimal part at the end of the decimal part so which means uh this zero is at the so the zeros, one, two, three, four, five, not six, sorry, that's five significant figures. So our answer is C, five significant figures. Question two, a stone of mass 400 grams is lowered onto a measuring cylinder containing water. The water level rises from 300 to 500 centimeter cubed. What is the density of the stone? What is the density of the stone? Okay, so we know that uh, density is equal to mass over volume. So uh, density, we know that is equal to mass over volume. And then here we have, uh, what is the density of the stone? Now, what is the mass of the stone? look at the mass they've given us is 400 so we say 400 grams uh divide by and then they say uh, the water level rises from 300 to 500 so what is the volume the new volume uh the volume of the stone should be 500 minus 300 which is 200 of course uh, 200 and then when uh, that is centimeters cubed 200 centimeters cubed and then that gives us uh that is uh two into four which is uh two point zero zero grams per cubed centimeters so our answer goes to that is uh two there that's our answer for this part all right question number three the graph below shows the speed of an athlete during a race. Okay, that is our graph here. We have the speed of an athlete during a race. This is a speed in meters per second. And then this is the time in seconds. Okay, and this is the graph, interesting graph. What is the distance traveled by the athlete? Okay, what is the distance traveled by the athlete? so when we have when we have the speed time graph the distance traveled by an object is the area under this curve the total area under this curve will be the total distance traveled by the uh by this uh, this athlete and that is the area under the curve so we're going to find the we're going to find the area under this curve and we're going to divide this into uh three parts three shapes we have one and two and the third one here so finding the area will be uh this is this is our this is our third part so finding the area will be what is the area here so that is the area of a square so total area will be the area of a square here is half a triangle sorry into square triangle is half um a times b which is uh from here to there we have four 
okay uh, the height is bh half bh not a times o half bh so we have the height as uh, 4 and then the uh, length from, from, from here to here the breadth is uh, 5 so we have times 4 times 5 and then to that area we're going to add the area of uh, a rectangle which is as L times B that means the length from here to there which is 14 minus 4 and that gives us 10 times uh, this uh, the breadth from here to there is 5 times 5 and then to that we have to add the area of this shape and what is that shape and the area of that shape okay and then we have the area of this shape here now this shape is a trapezium and the area of the trapezium is half the area of the trapezium is half times a plus b which is a plus b the lens uh, this in here to there and then I'm, I'm going to put a then I'm just going to put the number directly a plus b times multiply everything by the height um, that is the area of a trapezium so a from here I want to find from here to there it is 10 so we're going to put 10 there plus uh, we have from here to there is 5 so we plus 5 plus 5 times h which is the height which is from here 14 to 16 that is give us the length to be 2 and then we can cancel this and cancel that and then we have uh, 10 plus 2 okay and then here we can say 2 into 4 is 2 2 times 2 times 5 that is 10 plus 10 times 5 that is 50 plus uh, 10 plus 5 that gives us 15 people and then we say it's 10 plus 50 60 plus 15 that is uh, 75 meters as a distance so we come to the option let's say if we have 75 what is the distance traveled by the athlete uh, so it should be uh, this one here that is too much so it should be 75 as our answer 375 meters that's the answer you can jump to question 4 a brick a four kilogram brick is dropped from the top of a building whose height is 30 meters what is the velocity with which it reaches the ground okay so a four kilogram brick is dropped from the top of a building whose height is 30 meters what is the velocity with which it reaches the ground all right so here's what i want you to do uh, i want you to pause the video and then solve this question and then come back to uh, if you get it right okay if you have you if you're in my group if you're in my uh, e-learning group if you get it right send me a message within um, a few minutes and probably just want to see how many people can uh, will literally uh, get the concept here uh, and then uh, play the video again see see if if, if uh, so pause the video solve it before you watch it i want you to be watching like it's a movie it's not a movie you have to pass it uh, to participate so you have to uh i want you to solve it and then afterwards we can uh you can come and play it so we play the video and we do it together so here's how uh we'll go about it so saying a four kilogram uh so he we we have okay so we have um, we have a brick. Let's say this is a brick there. That's the height, which is uh, I know it's not thirty meters, and the brick is here. Okay, so this brick here uh, will 
dro is dropped from that height coming down this is uh, where it's coming here and then they say uh, what is uh, whose height is that's the height what is the velocity with which it reaches the ground okay so for, to solve this question we will we'll do two things first of all we'll we'll come up with um, we can calculate the potential energy of the brick we know potential energy is equal to mgh so let me know that also kinetic energy is equal to um, half mv squared that is uh, velocity squared so if we calculate the potential energy for this brick here it is its mass is 4 we multiply by the acceleration due to gravity we'll use 10 that is 10 uh, then we say multiply by the height is 30 so the potential energy will probably be uh, which is 3 times 4 that is 12 and then we have 0 0 so we have uh, potential energy as uh, 1200 that is 300 by 4 that is 300 by 4 is 1200 joules that is potential energy is 1200 joules now this entire potential energy by the time it reaches before it just hits the ground will be converted to kinetic energy that is the law of uh, conservation of energy that uh, energy can either be created or destroyed uh, it can just be converted from one form to another so this potential energy while it's what's at the top when it falls down will be converted to your kinetic energy and this kinetic energy so the entire energy here will be uh, kinetic energy and then they say what is the velocity with which it reaches the ground it will be uh, and we know the formula for kinetic energy that is equals to half uh, mass times velocity squared so we have 1200 the entire as potential energy which we know as it reaches the ground as the question suggests will be equal to the kinetic uh will be the, it will be uh entirely converted to kinetic energy so our kinetic energy just as it reaches the ground will be 1200 1 over 4 multiplied by the mass which is our mass is of course multiplied by 4 in times the velocity squared we do not know okay that is what we want so we can divide two there one two into four two and then we multiply here we have uh two v squared is equals to one thousand two hundred then we can divide both sides by two here by two and that side by two so we have uh um, let me come here so we have v squared is equal to uh, 2 there is 6 600 and then we can find the square root of 600 and then we get V is equals to my calculator I find 2.449 uh four eight something something so which uh we can put as 24.5 meters per second okay it one to one decimal point that is so the answer will be b okay so to recap again so we use the kinetic energy of the brick it was 30 meters high Four, kilogram, uh, 4 kilograms uh, in mass so meaning the total potential energy is 1200 and we say we know from the converse, uh, conservation of energy that the total potential energy will be converted to kinetic energy as it reaches the ground and then we know the formula for kinetic energy has velocity in it so therefore we can use this formula to find the velocity of the object and that velocity we said uh, we substituted everything into the kinetic uh, energy formula and then we found the energy to be 24.4948 which in one decimal place is 24.5 meters per second 
that is the velocity with which it hits the ground right hope that is it and uh, five a diagram below shows an object moving with a constant velocity when a force e of 30 newtons is applied so you apply a force 30 newtons uh, and then they say it, this object is moving with constant so when you're answering questions you can just read the question um, three times for the first time just to get the idea what is the value of the opposing force f okay so you just get you, you get the idea and then just saying the diagram below shows an object uh, moving with a constant velocity when a force e of 30 newtons is applied so you apply a force of 30 newtons to the object and then uh, the we know f here is acting as a uh, friction or the opposing force to this object now this object is moving with uh, a constant uh, velocity when the force e of 30 newtons is applied so what is the value of the opposing force so we're saying it's moving with uh, a constant uh, velocity when a force e of 30 newtons is applied what is the value of the opposing force f so the opposing force definitely should not be greater than the uh, the force which is being applied so we have the resultant force so we have uh, 300 here d which we, we can cancel out what obviously is not the answer 300 cannot be the answer so we can cancel out this one here uh, what is the value of the opposing force f and uh, the saying is moving with a constant velocity so um by the way uh please this is the right time for you to register for classes if uh if if you if you think uh you you probably make it just by you know leaving off uh scrap uh scraps of of, of 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 learning from here and there it won't help that much you need to be committed if you really want to get where, where you want to go uh if you what what you're going to achieve uh at the end of the day will be determined by how serious and how committed you are so we, we encourage you to register for full classes because they really they really help you and will will help you from point one to point from a to z we are going to teach you everything you need for you to to pass the exam and uh, you don't have to come at the end when the exam is closed now that's when you want to uh to be helped it doesn't work like that if you want to pass next year start preparing now register with us okay it's very important that you do that and uh, just to to register you can simply send them a message and the, the contact details and everything in this video i think will be there all right so the diagram below shows an object moving with a constant velocity when a force so what is the value of the opposing force f so the key is here constant that is too much again the key so if the object is moving with the constant the key is constant velocity meaning there's no net um there's no acceleration it's not accelerating it's moving the constant velocity meaning acceleration is zero so if an object has got a constant velocity meaning there are no forces to make it speed up so the force velocity and uh, the so if there's no uh net acceleration if acceleration is zero that means the forces are balanced it's not uh this is um the part where it's uh the refer it refers to the law of inertia okay these uh no net acceleration so that means the the forces are balanced if the uh the law of inertia the the, ob the object will continue in its form so c will be the option here c will be the answer okay there's no net acceleration here it's moving with a constant velocity if the if it was 15 then that means and then we have uh we have 30 here we would have a a net acceleration 300 would have a net uh, acceleration zero will have a net acceleration 
so innate force sorry innate force so, so 30 is the one which balances everything so that means the net force is equal to zero that means acceleration is equal to zero and the, which shows that the velocity is constant so the answer is 30 meters so we'll end here the rest of the questions will solve the entire paper in the full class if you want to join us uh, you can register and probably we'll go ahead and solve paper two but for this one uh, we'll end here for full answers to these questions or the full revision of this paper including learning other things you can register for the full classes so hopefully see you in the next video